Initially, we are going to practice the simple hand motion for placing a suture. On your suture board, place a dot at a point halfway along the bottom, about one inch in from the edge. Load a 30 millimeter needle on the end of your needle holder. Make sure that it is perpendicular and grasp it at a point about two thirds to three quarters around the curve. The basic motion for suturing is an anterior rotation of the wrist towards you. The wrist starts in the prone position and supinates towards you. We will always try to enter the skin or fascia at a right angle and exit at a right angle. This requires a rotation of the hand to follow the curve of the needle. Practice the supination motion a few times in the air. Do it smoothly. Use the full range of your wrist mobility. Now, let's practice on the board. Put the point of the needle in contact with the dot that you made on the suture board. Now gently rotate your hand so that the tip of the needle will follow a curving motion that replicates the curve built into the needle. As the needle comes out of the foam, rotate further so that two to three millimeters is exposed. Now release the needle by pushing and spreading your thumb to disengage the ratchet. Now pronate your hand once again and grasp the end of the needle perpendicularly with the end of your needle holder. Supinate your wrist and hand to follow the curve of the needle until it completely comes out of the foam. Pull the suture completely so that you can start over. Now let's practice that one more time. Enter the skin perpendicularly. Rotate your wrist to follow the curve of the needle. Release the needle. Regrasp the tip of the needle in a perpendicular direction. With a slight pull on the needle, continue the rotation of your wrist until the needle exits the foam. Pull the rest of the suture through. Here is your first assignment. Pause the video and repeat this exercise 10 times. Now, Let's create and close a simulated skin wound. To make an incision, we are going to use the scalpel with a number 10 blade, the large one. Hold the scalpel in your dominant hand, like a violin bow. We are going to incise the lower left line with a dot on either side. In order to provide traction and counter traction, use your thumb and index finger of your non-dominant hand to spread the skin as you cut the incision. In this model, the skin is a little sticky, so it might take several strokes to get through it. When finished, carefully put the cover back on the scalpel. Now, load the needle into the needle holder. The needle should be perpendicular at the end. Pick a dot in the middle of the line. Use the Adson forceps in your non-dominant hand. Hold them like a pencil. Pick up the skin to the left of the dot and engage the skin. Push the needle through and note that it is coming through. Disengage the needle, pronate your hand, re-grasp the needle and pull it through, leaving five centimeters of suture. Now reload the needle. Pick up the skin on the other side. Engage the skin at a right angle. Come out a little beyond the dot and pull the suture through. Now pull the suture all the way out. Practice this 10 times before continuing. For loose skin that comes together easily, it is possible to place a suture through both sides of the incision without removing it halfway through. We call this using one bite. In order to do this suture in one bite, first thing we need to do is load the needle perpendicular into the needle driver two thirds of the way down. Now grasp the part of the skin away from you and hold it up and out. Engage the needle into the skin at a right angle and supinate the needle through the skin. 
note that the needle is seen easily in the incision. Then grasp the skin toward you. Engage the skin and come out where the dot is. Release the needle and grasp it. Notice that the skin has not been released with the Adson forceps. Now rotate the needle through and bring the suture completely through the skin. Great! Practice this 10 times. The next segment will demonstrate an instrument tie.